Previously on a very special episode of Halo 4, Master Chief woke up, Cortana went mad, the Covenant found religion, and the Didact tried to turn us all into music, skull-faced soldier thingies. Um, I think that's what happened in Halo 4, right, Alessandro? Yeah, I, I think kind of. I, I especially like the music part, you know, because that thing was called the composer or whatever it was. But yeah, I think that's that's the gist of it, yeah. And now a couple of years later, we're back. It's time for Halo 5, Halo 5 Guardians. Easily one of the most important games for the Xbox, especially when you consider Halo the Master Chief Collection from last year, which wasn't that well received because of certain issues. Yeah, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't great. And it's, it was kind of sad because... You know, it was a great collection of games, and then the online was just not fantastic for a few months. Um, it's still not that great, still. So yeah, Halo 5 is a super important game for the Xbox One because Halo is, you know, the Xbox exclusive. It's the one that Microsoft fought hard to keep when Bungie left. And um, I don't know, hey, uh, I'm not entirely sure about it. Uh, we've played. We've played it now for a good week. We've both finished the campaign, and uh, just the campaign alone isn't enough to sell me on Halo 5 yet. Yeah, t tell me more about that. I mean, let, let me paint you a picture. I'm little Johnny. I've gone into to, to the shop. I've bought Halo 5 Guardians. I don't have an internet connection. I'm buying this solely for the single player because Halos 1 through 4 have actually delivered on that. So, am I going to be happy with just a pure offline single player experience in your mind? Yeah, so this is where okay, so this is where it gets tough. So Halo Five has been built as this massive hunt for Master Chief. Master Chief has now gone completely AWOL from the UNSC and you are tasked to hunt him down as Agent Locke with a fire team Osiris, which is a brand new, you know, like four man team that you get to commandeer most of the campaign. Uh, you like jump between perspectives, so you get to play as Locke and then you get to play as Chief and there's like 15 missions in the whole game and you only really play as chief in three of those so it's it's very much a agent lock type of game um but microsoft has really been punching hard this idea that it's going to be like this epic hunt you know you have to kind of figure out why master chief has gone awol and the story never ever really delivers on that you kind of always know why chief has gone away you never really get invested in why he's going away and like Locke and his team never really question why one of the biggest war heroes in the history of Earth has suddenly gone, you know, completely rogue. And they kind of also don't understand why they're being sent to hunt him. So there's a lot of this emotional weight that's supposed to be thrown at you, but missions just start. There's very little in between to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. For the first half of the game, I didn't even know what was going on. I just knew stuff was happening and I was shooting stuff. Um, and it's just... The story itself is not good, and that's not great for Halo because generally they're really good stories. Halo 4, as an example, was a really good narrative game. It had a really good uh, story between Master Chief and Cortana and like their bond being put to the test with this new enemy uh, on the horizon, stuff like that. And Halo 5 just kind of like takes a lot of what made Halo 4 great and just reverses it. They take, they change character motives, they change characters entirely. And it basically feels like Halo 5 is just a huge setup for another trilogy that already I couldn't really care how it ends. So if you're picking up the game offline and you're playing it alone and you're just playing the single player, what you have is a six to seven hour campaign that only really gets interesting in the last hour and then ends. So it's like the Halo 2 of the new generation. It really is a piss poor story. I mean, like halfway through, I didn't even know what what was driving me. I was just, oh, I'm going to shoot that. that. That's all yeah. I was thinking of. And then like, ah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know, like the first four missions, I was like, okay, has the story started yet? You know, is it still building up to like this big twist where I'm like, okay, there's my true motive. But I mean, Chief just suddenly goes off a wall, and you understand why, but like all of a sudden now you're hunting him. And the entire time, everything's just shrouded in mystery. And it all waits until the very end to kind of give motive to, to um, characters' actions. And even then, when it does, you're like, well, that's really stupid. Like, that was very, fairly obvious earlier on. I thought there was something better coming, you know what I mean? So, and I don't want to spoil anything. Like, if, if I wanted to talk about biggest reason why the story was terrible, I'd give the entire ending away, um, which I can't do. But it's just, it's not good. Like, it's really not good. There's no emotion in it. Uh, Locke, Locke and his team are pretty cool. Like, their little banter between each other is really cool. 
But other than that, it's just a by the numbers story that ends far too quickly for my liking. And I, I don't know, 3 for 3 is going to do something special if they want to continue this story arc with like another two games. I'll tell you what they can do. Let's just give us Nathan Fillion as the main character in yes. Halo 6. Yes, I'm so done. I actually experienced it because we played co-op um, and I got to choose who I wanted to be when we were playing co-op. So I actually chose uh, Bucky, who's Nathan Fillion. Bucky. He, yeah, Buck, <laughs> Buck or Bucky. Yeah, Buck. Uh, so he was really cool. Like you get to hear, what, what's cool about co-op is that you're playing the exact same missions as the campaign. You're just playing with up to four people online. Um, but you get to obviously choose who you want to be in the squad and then you hear banter from them from their perspective So there's certain things he would say that I wouldn't have heard playing as Locke in the single player um, But otherwise everyone plays the same like we discussed in the last podcast like All the movement enhancements the little boosts to left and right the little ground pounds every character's got that There's no, nothing to separate them this time. It's just what they end up loading out with at the beginning and what they end up saying during the missions but co-op is really fun co-op makes the campaign a lot more bearable because it makes the game more fun to like actually play than alone uh, at least that's what i find when we played uh, recently i don't know if you feel the same absolutely i think single player like offline single player is a complete write-off this year with this particular halo but when it's you and i playing co-op like just even two of us we we aren't even doing four player co-op at that point it's magical. I mean, you yeah. saw that, that launch trailer where you were launching Covenant into the air and your partner was taking over. You get that. That happens. They've really worked it. And yeah. what, what's yeah. amazing to me is the you know, map design. I mean, we were doing sort of saying Helios and you were on the ground. Meanwhile, I found another path and I could take on the turret and cover your back. To me, that is just pure brilliant. That is magical. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's one thing that Halo gets right with the campaign at least, the story is a bit of a write-off. But the gameplay is almost spot on. Like the level design is phenomenal. And like you said, it really lends itself to this co-op gameplay. So you don't really feel it in single player because your AI buddies are there and they're shooting stuff and they're healing you, but they aren't really, you know, creating really cool strategies. And when we played yesterday, we weren't even voice chatting. And I mean, like you said, I was on the ground. I really like getting into the thick of things and just like hitting people. And you were up there with a tyrant covering me with enemies that were flanking. And it just felt really, really good. And I think, I mean, Swords of Sanghelios is one of the best levels in the game, I think, because of all the stuff you get to do in it. But I do think that if you want to play Halo 5 at its best moments, you need to wrangle in some friends. Because playing it alone is okay, but playing it with four, three other people, that's going to elevate the campaign gameplay-wise to another level. Absolutely. Um, I played another level last night with another journalist. Uh, he was covering me uh, from a banshee while I was taking another path along the cliffs and blasting my way through. And he was just, you know, providing that covering fire. And like you say, we weren't even doing team chat at that point. We were just this perfect tag team, like Degeneration X, just laying <laughs> it down on the Covenant forces. And yeah, there's something great. special. No, it, it really it really is good. And I mean, what's weird about the co-op is that it doesn't create a local host. So you're still connecting to servers, an Azure server, you know, your, your closest one. So I never found it to be a problem. Like there was a little bit of delay, but nothing too hectic. Um, but that's something you have to keep in mind as well, that if you're really far from an Azure server, you will experience this little delay because that's where the, the co-op games connect. And that's where multiplayer connects as well. 100%. Uh, I was hosting yesterday with you and I, and I did find I had about half a second lag with, yeah. with my action. So it did kind of, you know, dampen the mood a little bit, but not too much. I mean, there's definitely some magic there. Yeah, it's definitely playable, put it that way. There, there wasn't a point where I was playing and saying, damn, you know, my grenades aren't going where I want to, my hits aren't being detected. Like, it, it, it was fine. It, the the netcode was kind of making up for it. Of course, the, the single player and the cooperative play is only one half of the game. The other big thing is the multiplayer. This yeah. is what Halo was built on. This is what made Halo a system seller back in the day with the original Xbox console. And every year it has you know, improved on that multiplayer. And I think I could safely say, if you liked Halo multiplayer, you're going to love Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think 343 really focused on multiplayer above anything else because they really wanted to get into that eSports e sphere. So Halo 4 already made some really drastic changes and they were really good. I mean, you could sprint, you could, you had these awesome spots and powers. And uh, Halo 5 just kind of takes these and distills it into a more balanced gameplay. So like I said, you, 
every every soldier kind of has the same spots and abilities you can do like a rush a melee dash you can do that egg pound you can do the little boosts left and right everyone's got that there's no different um uh you know spots and abilities that people have and uh then of course you have weapons with smart link so you can aim down the sights in halo as well now uh but your your aiming down the sights is disengaged with a single bullet hit so it's very different from you know a call of duty or a battlefield in that sense but what it really means is that halo has evolved forward for the first time in a long time it feels like a bit of a different game it takes a bit of a while to get used to again but it really feels a lot more competitive a lot smoother and i think it's going to be a huge hit with professional players absolutely there's also the one mode that i personally haven't had a chance to, to try but i mean we we're going to have to give it some time in the coming week when there's more people populating the servers. Uh, Warzone looks quite interesting to me from a Halo perspective in that it's not a pure first-person shooter that I'm looking at, is it? Yeah, so, I mean, Halo 5's got your traditional playlist, your Slayer, your, um, uh, the, the one with the Skull, I forget the name now. Uh, but basically, it's got Warzone. So Warzone is a brand new mode that hasn't been in a Halo before, and it channels a lot of what makes games like Dota and League of Legends fun. It's got these MOBA elements in it. So the best way to describe it in my view is, is thinking of Halo and Titanfall mixing together. In Warzone, you've got um, human control players and then you've got a lot of AI control players running around the field, which can be thought of as like creeps. Uh, so killing the creeps uh, earns you points, killing other players earns you points. And when you respawn, you can burn these credits or points to basically respawn with new weapons. You can summon vehicles, you can summon you know, some of the best weapons in the games, like special sniper rifles, special rocket launchers, stuff like that. Uh, and you just continually do that. So you've got like a, a buying and, and a, a shop type of mechanic in there. But the real aim of Warzone is to basically take down a few objectives. You have objectives popping up uh, all the time. And once you take down these objectives, your enemy core is open to attack. And the first team to destroy the other team's enemy, enemy core kind of wins. So it's very much like a MOBA in a Halo skin, but it works so well. It really, really is fun to play, and it's a different way to play Halo because you're now on these massive maps with um, very distant objectives, so not everyone's rushing the same points at the same time. And it's also fun if you're not really good at Halo because you get to like shoot these AI mobs and they're really terrible, and but you feel great when you kill them. So I think it's one of the, the most fun modes that Halo has uh, I, introduced in a long time. I kind of like the customization factor because, I mean, let me, let me set the obscene here for you. Um, Taryn from Igan, Africa, she's mm. probably got a side job as a jigsaw killer with the custom <laughs> games that she sets up in the Forge. So, for example, we're playing Slayer, uh, 50 kill limit. Basically, no shields, uh, infinite ammo, and sniper rifles. And it sounds ludicrous, but it's fun. That is great. It's nice to have that level of versatility in a multiplayer game, which you don't see in basically any other big-name shooter on the market today. Yeah, Halo, Halo has always been about the customization, and I mean, that's just present here. Every single playlist can be, you know, torn apart and put back together in all sorts of ways you want. And like you said, there's just custom games that you can create with friends. Uh, and then create into, you know, custom playlists that other people can play. So Halo's always been really good at that, but it kind of kicks it up a level this year in terms of customization with uh, requisition packs. So it's almost the microtransactions that Halo never had, but you look at it and you're like, okay, this kind of makes sense. So requisition packs can be bought with in-game currency or you can buy in-game currency to purchase them more. And what they give you are like weapon skins, they give you... Um, weapons to use in Warzone so that you don't have to earn them, you can just respawn with them. Some of them are temporary, some of them are permanent. It works the same with vehicles. It gives you a Spartan armor customization packs. You can customize the color on them. You can customize your emblem. You can do everything and anything to make sure that your Spartan soldier stands out amongst the rest on the field. And there's a, an enormous amount of customization on offer. And uh, we haven't really seen the real world price of what requisition packs will cost but from my experience of just in-game currency they seem pretty fair and they're not game changing things that you're getting in these packs so it's not a halo hasn't become a pay to win game at all this year so you, no one needs to worry about that i don't think okay so in summary halo 5 guardians this year uh offline single player complete waste of time yeah online cooperative play absolutely fantastic magical you've got to try it 
Yeah. And then yeah. we've got multiplayer. We've just scratched the tip of the iceberg. Um, yeah, we do caution, you know, just cautious optimism. Yeah, you know, because things can change. I think we, but I do think 343, they've learned their lesson after last year's uh, Master Chief collection roundup. So I've kind of got high hopes that they're not going to stuff this one up. They cannot afford to. So multiplayer for now, phenomenal. Yeah, multiplayer for now is good. I mean, we haven't had uh, the ability to try every playlist because they're not all unlocked yet, and we haven't tried with public servers. So we're gonna we'll update you know after we get a lot of time on with that because that is really important. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, nail on the head. The campaign alone not great. Campaigning co-op is better than when you're alone, but overall the narrative is just terrible. And uh, but the multiplayer somewhat makes up for it. So yeah, not the best Halo, uh, not the worst. I don't think. But certainly not as you know revolutionary as 343's first uh, try with Halo 4.